Hey everyone, I'm Aganix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. This is part one to a new tutorial series where I teach you guys about JD Script, which is a programming language used by the Godot game engine. I'm making this tutorial series as a way to help beginners or people who may struggle with aspects of programming in Godot, so you can navigate your way through JD Script much easier and learn the methods you need to know in order to script stuff on your own. In this part I'll be teaching how to create a script, the basics of the ready and process functions, and also how to use those functions in order to print a string into Godot's console. If you guys enjoy this or learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for part 2, and let's get right into it. Alrighty, so here we are in a brand new Godot project, and if you are interested in what version of Godot I'm using, I am using Godot 4.3. So what I'm going to do to start off here is I'm going to start off by creating a new 3D scene as an example. And in order to create a new script, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the node that you want the script to be for selected. And then in the inspector menu to the right here on the selected node, you'll see that it says script empty. So where it says empty, you just want to click on this and then go click on new script. And then that should pull up this menu here where we can now create a new script. So what I like to do is I like to have my scripts all neat and tidy in their own scripts folder. So where it says path here, you can see the path where the script is going to be made. So what I like to do is I like to click on this folder icon here. And then there's another folder icon up here with a plus symbol. And then you just click on this. And then now we can create a new folder for our scripts. So I'm just going to name this scripts. Just go OK. And then now we have a new scripts folder. So now uh, you can name your script whatever you want for this example. Um, I'm just going to call it example script, example underscore script. And by the way, if you ever want to like separate words in scripts, make sure that you use underscores and not spaces. I definitely do recommend that. And then we're going to go open and boom. So now we have the path for our script generated. So it's going to be in our scripts folder and it's called example underscore script dot gd. So now when everything is all good, uh, you just want to go create, and then now script is created. So after creating a new script, you will see that some default stuff has been made up here for us. And as you can see, we have the ready function and the process function. And I will get to what these are in a bit, but first off I want to talk about how it says extends node 3D up here. So what extends does is this basically defines the node that our script is extending from. So since I created this script for specifically a node 3D, it says extends node 3D. And basically extends node 3D allows us to use the properties and functions of the node 3D in our script. So let's say for example, I create a character body 3D node and then I create a new script for that character body 3D node. Uh, what it will then say is extends character body 3D. And what that will mean is that that script will be using the properties and functions of the character body 3D node. Alright, so now I'm going to explain what the ready and process functions do. These are two very basic functions in Godot GD script, and I will explain what they both do. So first up, let's talk about the ready function. So as you can see in the comment here, it says called when the node enters the scene tree for the first time. So basically, as soon as a node is active in the scene and it has a script attached to it with a ready function, that ready function will play. So basically, the ready function plays when a node first becomes active in a scene, whether it's at the very start of the scene, or whether that node uh, enters the scene whilst that scene is active. Uh, that is when the ready function will play. It basically plays as soon as a node becomes active in a scene. So then we have our process function, and as you can see here in the comment, it says called every frame. Delta is the elapsed time since the previous frame. Now I will explain what delta is in a bit and what that does, but first off let's talk about the overall process function. So yeah, as it simply explains in the comment, uh, the process function is called every single frame. So the process function happens at all times basically. And then what delta does is basically that makes sure that things aren't tied directly to the frame rate. So let's say for example you have a number which is constantly being added on to every single frame. Uh, depending on your frame rate, if it's at 60 FPS or 30 FPS, the rate of that number going up will be different. However, if you multiply that number by delta, 
then that will make sure that that number is going up at the same rate that no matter what the frame rate is. So even if you're playing a game at 30 FPS or 120 FPS, that number will always be going up at the same rate no matter what. So yeah, that's what the process function does, is it makes sure that stuff happens every single frame, and then delta makes sure that things aren't tied to the frame rates, and then there's no frame rate related issues. Another thing that I want to explain is what pass does, since you've probably been wondering to yourself, huh, I wonder what this does. Well, what this is mainly used for is this is basically used for empty functions so then no errors occur. So let's say, for example, you're making a script and you have a function that you're making, but you're not really ready to use it yet. It's just currently empty. Well, what you do to stop errors occurring from having an empty function is you'll just place pass here. So then it just lets the script know that that function's not being used right now. So yeah, so basically pass just makes sure that errors don't occur from having an empty function since uh, if I do remove pass, as you can see, there is now an error. But now if I indent and then write pass again, now there is no error. So yeah. One other thing that you do want to make sure you do as well as you are scripting and working on your scenes and stuff like that is that you do save, so press Control S. And uh, if you are creating a new scene that you haven't saved yet, you will need to save the scene as. So I'm just going to create a new folder here by clicking on this little folder icon of the plus symbol. And I'm just going to write scenes. And then I'm going to save my current scene into the scenes folder. So I'm just going to save it as node3d.tscn, which is the uh, file type for the scenes, tscn is. And we're going to go save, and boom, so now we have our scene saved. So make sure as you're scripting and stuff like that, you do press Control S to save often, and uh, yeah. All right, so now that I've taught you guys about the ready and process functions, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you guys how to print strings into this console here. So in your Godot project, you will have this little output console here. And if your one currently isn't active, you just want to press this output button, which toggles on and off the console. So if your one currently isn't on, just press the output button, and then that should toggle the console on. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the ready and process functions in order to print strings. So I can show you guys exactly how these work. So what we're going to do first is we're going to be using the ready function. So we don't need pass anymore since we're actually going to be making use of this function now. So you can you, so you can get rid of pass. And what we're going to do is we're going to write print. So what print does is this basically just allows us to print strings. And then we're going to have parentheses. And then we're going to do quotation marks. And then in your quotations, what you want to do is you want to write your string. So this can be literally anything. So for example, I might write, hi, my name is Omegonix. And so that's what my string will say. And you can make yours say whatever you want to. So now once you have your string written, you can just uh, press Control S to save your script. And then now what we're going to do is we're now going to test this out and we're actually going to see this statement be printed out into our output console at the very start of the scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to now test this out. So in the top right here, in case you don't know how to test uh, out your game, what you do is in the top right here, you can see that we have a few different options. So we have a regular play button, which basically allows us to run the general project starting from our main scene. And then we have this little uh, other icon over here, which basically allows us to run the current scene which we are in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go run current scene. And boom, so now our scene is running. And now there's nothing currently going on in our scene since there is literally nothing. However, if you look in our console here, you can see that it now says, Hi, my name is Omegonix, because the statement was printed uh, as soon as the scene started in the ready function. So yeah. So now what we can do is we can press the stop button in order to stop running the project. And there we go. So yeah, as soon as we started the project, the print statement was printed into the Godot console. So now if we grab this print statement by just dragging it and then going control C, press control and C at the same time, and then we get rid of pass, and then we press Control V to paste our print statement. What will now be happening is our print statement will now process every single frame when we start the scene. So let's go test it out. 
and boom, as you can see, uh, hi, my name is Omegonix is being printed every single frame into the console here. So as you can see here, um, from these comments, they're just happening every single frame. So there's currently uh, nearly 2,500 comments that have currently been, uh, you know, entered now. So uh, yeah. So there are quite a bit of statements right here being printed every single frame. As you can see, we're, we're currently approaching 5,000. But yeah, so that's how the process function works, is stuff basically happens here every single frame. So yeah, that's what happens with the process function. And now we can stop, and boom. So as you can see, we had 6,000 uh, prints there from our string. Now, one thing that you might notice, and that you've probably noticed uh, for a bit of this video now, is that in the bottom right here of our uh, script view, you can see that there's like this little caution symbol. Now, if we click on this, it will tell us uh, what the warning is. So it says the parameter delta is never used in the function process. If this is intended, prefix it with an underscore, and then it says uh, that we need to do underscore delta. So this isn't particularly important at all. It's not like your script isn't going to work if you don't do what it says here. This is just like a little warning, basically. But it, it doesn't really actually, you know, affect anything at all. However, if you want to listen to this warning, um, what you do is, let's say, for example, you're using your process function, but you have no use for the delta uh, variable at all. What you do is you just put an underscore out the front of it, and then that makes sure that the script knows that it's not going to be used anymore. So one last thing that I do want to talk about before ending part one to this series is comments. So as you can see here above our two ready and process functions, we have these two comments here. So one says called when the node enters the scene tree for the first time, then the other one says called every frame, blah blah blah. So basically what comments do is they basically allow us to add extra explanation to things in our script. So for example, with these uh, two comments here, they basically give us an extra explanation for what the ready and, f and process functions do. And if you want to add comments of your own, you totally can. So let's say, for example, you are scripting something and you might want to remind yourself of what that particular function is doing, or you might want to remind uh, other people who are working on a game with you what a particular function is doing. What you'll do is, so let's say for example you might want to explain to people what this uh, print function is doing right here. What you'll do is you'll write a hashtag and this will start a new comment and then you can write your statement so it can be anything. So let's say for example I might want to write this will print a statement. So yeah, you can literally write anything for comments if you want to. So yeah, they basically just allow you to give ex extra explanation to both yourself and other people what particular things in your script are doing. So yeah, that's what comments do. And so anyways guys, that's going to be the end of part one to this new series where I teach you guys about GD script in Godot. So I do have a bunch more stuff planned for future parts, this is just only getting started. So I just wanted to go into very basic stuff today. If you already knew a bunch of the stuff that I talked about in this tutorial, that's totally fine. This is just more so for beginners. So yeah, so anyways, uh, that's in this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.